Today I'm going to start my um, first baby preparation vlog and what I need to do is check my list of things that I want to have on hand for when baby Hannah arrives and I'm just going to go through today what I've already got down and then um, see what things I need to buy or order still and get that stuff on the way. So as you may remember I have my planner that I've been using this year and in the back I added a section for baby stuff and let's see this is the very last page has my list of birth and baby supplies um, everything that I want to have on hand I have this available on my blog as a free printable so if anybody is interested in you know having like a little guide for what you need when you're gonna have a baby which of course I'm sure it's gonna be a little different for everybody but this would at least get you started on what you want for your own baby you're free to go print that off it also has the um, form that I made for doing my little prenatal appointments that I do for my prenatal um, supplies these are the things that I use to do my um, my little prenatal checks this is something I will have to go to the doctor to get um, obviously if you don't have negative blood type then you don't need to worry about that it's just for me I organized my list by where I would be using it we're just gonna open this up today I guess this is what I call my baby dresser I took the baby basket off but my Moses basket sits on top for the baby to sleep in but I wanted to surface to lay out my books so I took that off for right now and I'll show you what is inside this is the drawer where um, I always keep the baby diapers and that is so tiny it always excites me when I see those little newborn diapers so I'll have her diapers out of the package put in here wipes here and then I always fold um, my receiving blankets and stack them up right there this side is usually where I keep all like the grooming and bath stuff um, what the heck is this? Oh, these are the new pillowcases from my bed. Then this drawer currently has little baby gifts that you guys have sent right there. Um, but I usually put like baby clothes and things like that in here. I also have a breast pump that I never use and um, little breast pads. Those are the bras and things like that that I use like during labor and um, braces and things for pregnant bellies. This bottom drawer is the most interesting one probably, um, at least right now. That's where I keep all my towels that we can use for the birth. And um, what do we got here? We have a foot printer. This has ink that's like on a little membrane so you can take baby footprints without getting their little feet dirty. Family Bible for recording um, births and marriages and things. This has the decorative um, birth certificate in it. If you'll recall, we had planned to have Claudia at home, which is why I already have most of this stuff on hand since we did not end up having her at home. Most of it's still here, but I did use some things still in the postpartum periods. So there's still going to be things that I need to get. Back here is a bag for the to cover the mattress with. I've never actually used them, but it's nice to have one on hand. Some people just use a shower curtain which would also work. Um, and then this is like part of a roll of plastic drop cloth to lay down on the carpet in case you need to protect the carpet. Um, these are just a couple leftover like menstrual pads but they're like the bigger ones for maternity. And washcloths. These are those big pads that you lay out, lay out on the bed. Like some people use those like puppy potty training pads. It's basically the same thing. But I lay them on my bed or on the chair where I'm sitting right after the baby's born because for the first few days it's easy to make a mess on accident. Um, this is like a depends type thing. I like to put these on in labor because uh, you never know when your water is going to break and it can make a big mess. So it's kind of nice to have one of these on to... Um, catch anything and keep from making a mess and I have a little hospital gown type thing that unbuttons um, just for convenience I sometimes wear it and sometimes I don't then back there is 
a liner. No, no, the liner. Where is the liner? Maybe it's with the birth pool. We have a birth pool, and then there's a liner. These are packs of gloves, like sterile gloves. And what else we got? This is my little bag of goodies here. I'll pull this out. Before I get into that, though, I'm going to mark off the things that I've seen in here that I know I don't need to pick up. Okay, so let's just start pulling some things out of here. Um, these are rubber nipple shields, and these are invaluable when you're first breastfeeding. I would not have made it with my first baby if I had not been given one of these by a lactation consultant. Um, they help tremendously if you get a cracked nipple to still be able to continue breastfeeding. And they also help the baby, to me, learn to latch a little better. So um, if you're new at this, definitely pick up a couple of these. I, I ordered a package on Amazon for less than five dollars I think to get two of them so they're just rubber nipple shields I just realized that I must not have those on my list which is amazing so I'm gonna write that on there but that means one that I've had up on my blog all this time doesn't have nipple shields my handwriting looks atrocious there okay so this is a little just a little strainer like a kitchen strainer but if we use the birth pool Sometimes things come out in the pool that you don't want floating in the pool. So this is to scoop those out. And I've already marked that on my list. Um, these are extra bottles of ultrasound gel for using my Doppler. We got some um, nipple cream. So I can mark that. Um, got some newborn baby hats for when... I put these on the babies when um, I'm not holding them to help them stay warm. When I'm holding them, I prefer to kind of undress them and let my body heat do the job. But when they're not being held, it's nice to have. Um, this is just a pulse oximeter. Uh, this isn't necessarily for birth, but I like to have it. That checks how much oxygen is in your blood. I can't remember the name of the company where I bought this from. I'll have to look. But um, I had bought this from a birth supply place or a similar one, and they didn't carry them anymore. So I found a medical supply place that I could get them from still. And it's it um, clamps and cuts the cord at the same time. So the clamps are built in. And then, so you just put this on the umbilical cord and squeeze. And it takes a little strength. But um, anyways, it cuts the cord and clamps it all in one motion. I like to be prepared. <laughs> then we got more gloves. This is just a bottle of disinfectant. Um, there we go. This is a blood pressure cuff. I also have a digital one. Um, this is tape that you can use. It came in a kit to tie the umbilical cord. This thing is indispensable. It's a peri bottle and you fill it with warm water when you go potty and you use that to clean yourself for the few, first few days or so after you have a baby so that you don't have to be rubbing tender tissues. So this thing is very important to have on hand. There we go. Now this I had made for when Claudia was born. Um, Obviously, we didn't have her at home after all, so I didn't use it. But there's a weird thing that happens, or at least it has to me, when you have a baby at home, is that I had a hard time remembering later. What was her birthday? When was she born? And so I thought, I'm just going to make a little card like you get at the hospital that has all that information on it in one place because I didn't want to forget. So that's in there. Also, in the same pack is an Eldon card and like the stuff to take blood um we just got blood from the umbilical cord so we didn't have to actually like puncture the baby but because of my blood type and tom's blood type being i'm negative and he's positive if 
if the baby's negative, I don't need to have the Rogam shot. So far, all of our kids have been positive, so I've had to have it every single time, but um, that we have that there so that we can check, and it would be nice not to need to get the shot if I didn't need it. So um, I had an Elden card ready to take the blood type. So this is just a little tool to remove the cord clamp, but um, any pair of sharp little cutters can cut through the plastic. Then it looks like I just have like pool patches, um, extra cord clamps there, like metal ones you can sterilize. What's this? Oh, this is a little lancet. Um, even more cord clamps and some scissors in there. Okay, so it looks like um, when we get close to the birth, we'll have to get a prescription. Um, I probably will order some extra sheets for the bed because I don't have any at the moment. So it's nice just in case we make a mess, um, we can change the sheets. I'm going to order some more. Depends. Oh, I didn't show you this. Down in here, we have a couple of different adapters for the hose. So if we use the birth pool, we can hook the hose up to one of the sinks. You definitely want to try those out to make sure you have the right one before the big day arrives because different sinks take different adapters. So, and then we changed our faucet, so we had to get another new adapter, but anyways. So I'm going to order some more Depends panty things, the mesh panties that are like disposable for after the, after the birth, more of the large maternity menstrual pad things. Um, you know, I was thinking, I actually do think I ha need to get another birth pool liner. And then we will be making some herbal things to have ready. Um, I guess I already have that. And I'm going to order a new foot printer because this one's old and I don't know if it's dried up or not, but I'd rather make sure that we have a good one. I like to fill out a card um, with some basic information to keep in case we need to call for an ambulance that we have everything like lined out and then a list of things to take to the hospital in case we need to go to the hospital. Um, oh, I do have a baby scale. It's right there. So I can mark that one off. And um, I have an APGAR chart. I just need to get that out probably. And I need to get another um, keepsake tape measure. I don't need one, but I would like to have one. I'm just thinking that maybe I had a tape measure already in here with the Alden card and I do so I can mark that off um then I need to get baby powder actually I've got that I don't really use it much but it's nice to have it on hand and just in case I'm going to be making diaper rash cream we're going to do that together and um like baby wash and baby lotion um I might sew a pad for the sink for giving baby baths but we'll see um, I'll pick up a few pacifiers. Even though I bought or breastfeed, I like to have a bottle on hand and some single serving formulas just in case we need them. Um, and we need to get some burp cloths or make some one or the other. And I'll have to look up in the attic and see what clothes we have, see if we need to get anything down. I've already picked up onesies and pajamas and socks. We'll be sewing the receiving blankets and a fleece blanket and sheets for the Moses basket. Then I need to pick up some new panties for myself. Um, I'm not sure if I'll get new nursing pajamas or not. More menstrual pads for after, you know, the six weeks after, and some overnight size ones for sleeping. And then I'm gonna look in the attic and see what I've got for, like, it's a girl type things. Even though I don't really do baby showers anymore because we don't really need things. I still like to have like a little party after the baby's born and we put up some decorations and we get a cake and welcome anybody that wants to come over and meet the new baby so that we still have a little celebration even though we don't necessarily need gifts or anything like that because I like to I like to honor the new baby just the same. So then the rest of this is all stuff that I want to have on hand for the little party and that's for um, reminding me that we need to check ahead of time to make sure that any extra chairs that we're going to pack out, like the like folding chairs, or if we had to get some from outside, that they've already been wiped down because that's something I don't want to have to deal with when we're getting ready for the party. So now that I see kind of what I need to do, 
I can add a lot of these to my shopping list and stuff that I'm going to be making I'm going to add into my schedule for when we need to start working on that stuff. And of course I'll be taking you guys along for as much of it as I can so you guys can um, enjoy getting ready for baby Hannah with me. Baby Hannah's color is going to be red but a lot of things don't come in red they'll be like hot pink so we're going to use either color whatever works or makes sense at the moment. So here's the fabrics that we bought for making her blankets and sheets and receiving blankets. And these are the things that I have in her basket so far ready to go. This is Claudia's old sheet so I'll be making new ones just because I like every baby to be special and have their new things. We have a t uh, towel and washcloth. These are bottles that I'll be using for when we do the um, supplies like the lotion and things for her. And I got some essential oils in here for her. And this was from our friend Jess that made that for her. It looks so cute. Um, I've got the onesies, some jammies, socks, and that was a little um, brush and comb set there that I ordered. Once everything's completely ready, I'm going to do one video just on all of the baby supplies that we have, like all complete. But this kind of gives you an idea at least of where I'm starting at from right now. So yesterday I went through and made my or check my list to see what I already have for birth supplies. You were with me for that just a minute ago. I'm going to order today from InHisHands.com. It's a birth supply company. And then I've also ordered from Birth and Beyond, I believe it's called. And then the place I got the cord clamp um, cutter thing was from Bound Tree Medical. And I couldn't just buy that. Of course, this was, you know, two, three years ago. But um, I couldn't just buy the clamp thing. I had to buy a kit of stuff for like $20 but at any rate those are the three places that I bought birth supplies from but today we're going to be going to in his hands birth supply one of the things I like about these kinds of companies is that you don't have to buy a ton of things like here if I wanted a 23 by 36 under pad I can get one for 50 cents or I can get this size for 35 cents for just one that means you don't have to like you don't have to buy a case of something or a big box you can just pick two or three or one or whatever you want and everything's very inexpensive so this is the foot printer and you just put the baby's foot on that little membrane and it stamps their foot onto your paper so we'll get one of those I'm gonna get a couple of pairs of these um, disposable mesh panties And as I'm ordering things, I'm marking them on my list, but I'm using a different color so that I can see which things are ordered and which things are already here. So here's what I've ended up with. The foot printer, the panties, some overnight maternity pads, the birth pool liner, and some Depends. But I want to check in the attic to make sure that this is the one that I have. I think I have the mini birth pool, but um, that's... By far the most expensive item so I want to make sure I get the right one but altogether it's coming to $66 and um, 42 of it's for that liner I thought I'd check Amazon real fast to make sure they didn't have it cheaper for the liner but it's actually seven dollars more on Amazon than the in his hands website a little violent there um up in the corner is a big blue bag up over there and it has my birth pool and I just want you to look at the label on the front of the bag and see what it says because I don't know if I have I think I have the mini pool I don't want to show how I order the liner there's a big blue yeah what do I bag. Read off okay it? there should be so I think there's some white words printed on the front of the bag somewhere Warning, always discuss use of this pool for labor or birth with your midwife or doctor before use. Never allow diving in this pool. Never leave children unattended. Sure, competent adult supervision at all times. Never place Okay, pool. does it say birth pool in a box somewhere? Yeah. And did it say mini? No, it just says birth pool in a box. Echo. Echo, okay. Echo. All right. That'll, that'll tell me what I need now. Thank you. Thank you. I ended up having to actually get the whole pool down and pull it out of the bag to see for sure. But I have the Echo regular size pool. So I did have the wrong liner in my cart. Also today I'm going to be ordering some herbs to get my um, birth herb stuff ready. And I already have 
everything, but I thought it would be nice to have some nice fresh ones just to be sure that they're nice and potent for when I need them. So I'm going to order some uh, raspberry leaves, which I picked some from our garden at the during the summer, but I would like to have extra, so I'm going to pick some of the, or order some of those. I'm going to order <laughs> some cinnamon, the um, sweet cinnamon, cinnamon verum, I believe is how it's pronounced because I had not heard of this before, but apparently it also helps with postpartum hemorrhage. And so I thought, well, that might be nice just to have on hand and um, just drinking cinnamon tea sounds good, whether or not I actually need it, but it would be good to have it too. Um, then, oh, and Shepherd's Purse, I'm gonna order some more of that to make some tea or some tincture also to have, which is also good for postpartum hemorrhage. So hopefully I don't need these things, but just in case I wanna have them on hand. As long as I'm at the order, I thought I should just come on down here and see if I'm getting low on anything so that I can um, order everything at once. Looks like I need to stock up on some beeswax. So those are the things I'm going to add to my order that I'm just getting low on. And I've been waiting for this tarragon oil to come into stock. And they sent me an email a few days ago so I can order that today too. Here's everything I got. There we got cinnamon, raspberry leaf, shepherd's purse, beeswax, calendula, chickweed, comfort root, some onion, oregano, and tarragon. They're out of sarsaparilla. I use herbs medicinally, so it's something that I put in money and savings each month to um, have money when I need to order herb supplies, that it's kind of like my medical my medical fund, kind of. So, um, yeah, this order's gonna come to $81. I mostly just got four ounces of everything except for the onion, comfrey, and beeswax. Yeah, those ones I got a full pound. And then, um, the essential oil was $11 for a half ounce. So, anyways, um, each individual thing is not that expensive. The beeswax is the most expensive thing that I'm getting today. But, all together, it's coming to $81. Also today, I'm going to make receiving blankets for the baby. So, we're going to make two out of this fabric, two out of this one, and two out of this one. And it's going to be my first time to use my new sewing machine that I got at Christmas, so I'm excited about that. I'm going to make a separate video showing exactly how to make the blankets, the receiving blankets, but I'll at least give you a little glimpse of it on this vlog. today. Yep. This is my first time making liquid soap so I think I'm about ready for the cooking stage and I gotta get ready to go to my grandparents house so hopefully this all goes smoothly. The well, last night I was making the soap um, and I ran out of time because I had to go to grandma's house. So I switched from doing the crock pot method to an oven method. But when I tested it this morning, it wasn't quite done. So I've put it back in the oven for another hour. Now I'm gonna test it and see if it's ready to go. This is what it looks like right now. So I have to mix a little of this with water and see if, if the water gets cloudy. That means the oils aren't done. And then I have some, I have to put a drop of this in. And if it turns pink, that means there's still 
excess lye. So we'll see how it is now. Well, the water is still cloudy, so we'll see what happens when I put this in. And still pink, so we must need to go longer still. I cooked this for another hour. There's no more pink left at all. And it was still a little cloudy, but the book said that if you test it in hard water, that can make it cloudy. So I tried it in distilled water, and it's not cloudy. So I think I'm ready to move on to the next step. I'm going to stop my soap paste at this point and store this. And then as I want to use it, I will be taking out portions and diluting it further to um, actually turn it into the liquid. So here's my finished soap. These ones are completely diluted and ready for making our baby shampoo. And then I got five pints and a half pint of paste that can be diluted in the future for um, soap. I didn't want to show directions for how to make the soap because this is my first time and I don't want to act like I know what I'm doing when I'm just learning. But I will tell you I'm following the directions in this book called Liquid Soap ba Making by Jackie Thompson.